This morning on today's health, we're busting popular nutritional myths. Is dark chocolate a health food? Are white products like bread, rice, and pasta really unhealthy? Here to debunk some of those myths is today's diet and nutrition editor and iVillage contributor, Madeline Furniture. Madeline, good morning. Hi, Anne. How okay, are you? Let's talk about this number one, high fructose corn syrup can cause obesity. Okay, this is simply a myth. Fructose is fruit sugar. It's naturally in the food supply, but when it's added to all of these drinks and beverages, sodas, and packaged baked goods, we get a lot of, not just fructose, but a lot of extra calories. So when we say that high fructose corn syrup is causing obesity, not true. It's the carrier for all of these products. You want to limit any soda and juice drinks, and really look for it in packaged goods. All these calories are going to promote obesity. Well, so not the, just in general, fructose. though, it's not a good idea to go eating too much of this stuff anyway. Too much okay. of this stuff is mm -hmm. no good for you and going to no. cause weight gain and it's empty calories. You say myth number two is dark chocolate is a health food. Now listen, I heard dark chocolate has got antioxidants, it makes you feel good, it's good for your brain, so why is that a myth? Well, dark chocolate is not a health food, but it does have health promoting properties in a larger amount. If you have chocolate every day, about the half the size of this big bar, mm -hmm. this may have some health promoting activities, but don't use it as an excuse to overconsume it. And if you don't like chocolate, don't start now. Some of the newer products actually have value added. You can get little dark chocolate chocolate with calcium yeah, added. I eat these things. These, you you really have two terrific. of these a day, apparently. Something, and there are other kinds of versions of this. You know, you're going to get your calcium for the day, which oh, is a big right. deal for women. Another is this Cocovia product that has phytosterols, mm. you know, those plant products that actually can help to lower cholesterol. But again, if you don't like chocolate, don't switch to that, and moderation is key. No more than 150 to 200 calories. Because you actually say that, in fact, on the calcium thing, you can have too many of these and give you kidney stones. Right, so don't right, look at so it as a snick snack. It's going right. to be really a functional food. White food is not good for you. Well, you know, White food is not the optimal. As we discussed, you know, whole grains are always best, but a lot of people won't eat whole grains, so what do you do? Uh, you want to get some fortified with fiber and some a little protein, some of these white breads and even white tortillas. Now, you may look at this and say, well, why not whole grain? In the real world, a lot of people won't go near that, but it's important to, to look for some of these white products that are going to give you some fortification and more fiber, even things like the lowly potato, and this is a big one, and you'd want to have sort of maybe half that size or something that's not going to be loaded with butter and sour cream, but it's about 150 calories. It's got uh, a lot of fiber and a lot of vitamins. So don't stray from white foods, but be very careful and look for fortified. Limit them, though. Limit, Limit them. them. Whole grains are always going to be the best choice. Consuming fish is not worth the risk of mercury poisoning. Now, that's a big issue. We've been hearing a lot about this, Madeline. And there's a lot of truth to this. The myth is that you should not eat fish at all because all fish is going to have mercury. What you want to do is, is look at the kinds of fish carefully. You really do want to stay away from shark and tilefish sword and, and swordfish. These are the three highest in mercury content, but there are others around of salmon and haddock and even some canned tuna is going to be fine. Good source of omega-3s. You, omega, you should eat fish. Even pregnant women now, the recommendations are two servings a week. About the size of the palm of your hand is one serving. But, you know, if you're not pregnant, several times a week is great. Lean protein and heart healthy You can fat. also get um, also vitamins that have omega-3s. So yes, that's another absolutely. Idea. Okay, now let's talk about red wine. Now, we all heard that red wine is good for us, good for our hearts. It's really, you know, uh, not a bad thing. You're saying well, you know, red you wine mess is. Up my day? Well, no, but I'll help to improve your day. <laughs> red wine has got flavanols, again, these heart healthy compounds, the antioxidants. But whether it's the red wine, whether it's a red fruit like pomegranates mm. or grapes, whether it's the alcohol, as you see in a martini, these are all really up in the air. So red wine does a lot of things. It may not improve your heart health alone. A healthy lifestyle counts. So, again, don't start drinking red wine thinking it's going to be health promoting if you don't drink at all. And moderation is key. And there was actually a study that just just came out a couple of days ago that talked about women and breast cancer and that if you drink too much uh, alcohol, you know, m several uh, times a week of drinking alcohol increases right. your alcohol risk of can be a breast cancer. Can be, so. so moderation is always key. A drink a day for women, two for men. But if again, that, if right. that, and don't start drinking if you don't already already consume alcohol. Okay, eating sugary foods causes diabetes. I worry about this. I've got diabetes in my family. Well, you know, take a look at this stuff. This is going to cause a lot of weight gain. Weight gain is closely associated with diabetes. Now, the issue is sugar. If you have normal metabolism, not diabetic, it's not going to cause diabetes. You you don't want to gain weight from all of this stuff, but again, moderation is key, smaller amounts as But a you're treat. saying that eating too much sugar is not going to trigger diabetes. Too That's much sugar saying. doesn't trigger diabetes, okay. whether it's honey, brown sugar, or just plain white table sugar. Mm -hmm. But moderation, keep your weight stable, and make some good choices. It's really possible. Bottom line, so. eat less. There At you go. Eat less of the bad stuff, eat more of the good stuff in That's general. Right. And don't think anything's a magic elixir. No there magic you go. bullet. All no right. magic bullet. Right. A healthy lifestyle is hard work. Madeline first. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much. And to find more information on this, you can read Madeline's blog. You can go to iVillage.com.